All right, today I'm going to be digging into a 2004 Honda Foreman Rubicon 500 rear end. I'm going to show you how to replace wheel bearings in the rear end. I'm going to also show you how to replace brake shoes as well as adjust the brakes. I'm going to show you how to get to the differential, so remove that axle and also the shocks here to replace bushing. So I'm going to walk you through every step of the way. Make sure you stick with us. If this video has been helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when we come out with more Honda videos. We've got hundreds of other videos on different makes and models, so make sure and check those out. Thanks for watching. All right, first thing you're going to need to do if you have not is obviously pull this wheel off. Typically, they're a 17 millimeter lug nut. Four of them, installing them, you want to go on a crisscross pattern, but uh, to remove them, it really doesn't matter which pattern you go in. Pull that wheel off there. Obviously, the rear end is going to be jacked up at this time. Uh, we've got an inch and three sixteenths nut on here that we need to pull, but before that, we've got a cotter pin that we got to pull out of there. And I've showed you on several other videos how to remove that. Just use a pair of side dikes, lift that out of there, kind of pinch it lightly, pull it, and just kind of wedge it out of there. Once you get that off, grab your inch and three sixteenths socket there, throw it on there. I really like to use a half inch drive, just to make sure we get the job done right. Go ahead, pull that one off of there. Now our hub is actually ready to come off. Sometimes it takes a little bit of persuasion. Uh, get your fingers in behind there, just kind of work it out just like that. That's gonna be the right hand side. Your, your left hand side is gonna look a little differently. Basically it doesn't have that seal on there, this spacer that sits against this seal here. So the other side isn't as crucial that it is sealed up as tight. Um, but that is what the right hand hub looks like. Now to pull our brake drum cover off. This isn't actually our brake drum. Inside of here is our brake drum. So we've got eight millimeter bolts all the way around. Okay, we've got six of these small eight millimeter bolts there. Set those aside. And then we're gonna grab, uh, if you can't just remove it just like this, which sometimes you can, um, there's spaces in there to get a flat screwdriver. If you do that, you wanna make sure you don't damage this cover here, nor do you wanna damage this aluminum panel here. So get in there, just pry on it a little bit, go to the next one. I believe there's three or four of them around this thing. And then once you get a little bit of a break in there, a lot of times you can just take and work it off with your hands just like that. Now our brake drum cover is off. If you've got a problem with water in here, or uh, you see some other issues, it may be this seal there. That's an easy one to replace. Set that aside, now we've got our brake drum here. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick. If your brake drum just, for one, if it's not moving, for two, if it's not coming off, you may need to move this back and forth. If this is seized, there's a shaft going through here, and I'll show you a little closer view here in a little bit, but if that shaft is seized up, you might have to grab a hammer and tap one direction or the other, because what that's doing is expanding those brake shoes and doesn't allow this brake drum to pull off of here. You can see when we get it off of here, there's a little bit of a lip in behind here. And if that lip, if those shoes are catching on that lip, you're not gonna be able to pull that off of there. So you wanna make sure that this is completely centered. Basically, and again, I'll show you a quick uh, picture of what this looks like. But basically you need these shoes in the smallest position possible. So go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a close up here for you. And again, to get this brake drum off of here, just kind of wiggle it off just like that. What you don't wanna do is get a screwdriver in behind here take and pry on it. What you're gonna do is damage this panel. Uh, you may ding up your brake drum, but more than likely you're gonna damage this area here and you want this to seal. There is a rubber O-ring around there that you're gonna want to seal. Now, pull that brake drum off. Again, I'm gonna show you this. If that brake drum, this pivot bolt here is stuck in one position, it's gonna take and push these shoes uh, up and down and it's gonna lock that brake drum in place. So you wanna make sure you've got it centered and that way they're as small as they possibly can. What happens a lot of times is these sit for a long period of time. Water will sit in here and it'll corrode actually the brake shoes to the brake drum. A lot of times what happens is you'll pull these off and you'll end up pulling your brake shoe, just this pad here, off with the brake drum. And I've seen that happen so many times because water gets in here. This one's in really, really good shape. These shoes are in great shape um, and uh, we had no problems getting that off of there. Okay, to replace your shoes, now what you're gonna do is take a pair of side dikes here and get in behind here and pull on this cotter pin. So you saw how I kind of straightened that out and was able to take and just pull that out, do the same thing on this side, take and just give us a little room there and take and use that to pry on it. Now that's ready to come out of there. We've got a little plate holding this on. Now we can just take and slide our shoes off just like this. You still have your springs on there and that sometimes can be fairly difficult, but I'm using the rags because this brake dust is nasty and dirty and a little bit 
grease and oil in there. So now what I do is take and I'll actually just pull it because there's a little lip right here on this pivot point as well. So I take, you can do one side if you want at a time and just pull this out just like that. Okay, once you get the bottom out of there, do the same thing with the top, take. Okay, there we go. There we go, now we got both shoes partially out of there. Now to replace them, just pull them completely off. Pull those springs off of there and push the new set back on. Just as easy as that. These are in great shape. I just wanted to show you how to do it. And then to get them back on, again, just tap them in there into place. A lot of times these front ones here, I guess the back ones, um, will just fall into place there. But you do want to make sure that it's centered really well. Make sure it's on far enough to get your plate on there. If you need to, you can take something like this here. Just tap them the rest of the way in. And then don't forget to put your cotter pins back in there. That is how you replace the brake shoes on a Honda Rubicon 500. I'm gonna go ahead and re remove this panel at this time so you can see what that looks like. Okay. And you can just take, tap that into place there, take and bend this up. I like to bend them off to the side rather than straight out. Um, that, that way they don't get in the way of our drum. If they do, it's just gonna score up that drum a little bit. It'll end up breaking these cotter pins. Not a huge deal, but then you've got a cotter pin floating around in here. So, got that back on there. Now I'm going to go to the back side of this and remove this panel. We're going to take and slide this off. This would be how you replace wheel bearings. Uh, you're going to need to pull this panel, remove those wheel bearings this way. What I've got here is a 14 millimeter, and then I've actually got an impact swivel. So, you can impact this swivel here. It works really well for something like this, where you're not going to be able to get an impact straight in there. Go ahead and grab this. to where these swivels are. They're very, very handy. I use them every day. They're just great tools to have. Now, we've got a vent line here. Remove that vent line, then we can take and pull this panel off of here. Now, we can get to our uh, rear wheel bearings here. This is the right side rear wheel bearings. We've got a seal, and then in behind here, we've got bearings. We can get to both sides, which makes it easy when it comes time to replace those. So, Setting that down, now what I'm going to do is take our axle carriers off of here, our shocks, and then we're going to be able to remove that differential. So we've got 14 millimeter bolts holding the shock on. We've got 14 millimeter bolts holding this swing arm carrier, this axle carrier on. I'm going to need to grab a 14 millimeter wrench there. Okay, all those are off of there. I'm gonna, not gonna remove all of these bolts yet because it's kind of holding this carrier in place here while we remove these. Same thing, using our swivel. This one's a little bit harder to get to even with the swivel. I think if I were to use a short or a shallow socket, I could probably get to this one, but I've got a wrench handy here. off, bottom one's easy to get to. That one's off. Now we're gonna go to the other side of our differential, remove these, and then we should have that pretty much disconnected there. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of people asking how to remove this swing arm. What you do is grab a large Allen socket just like this. I'll show you where to get those. This is a 17 millimeter. A lot of times they're half inch drive here. So stick that in there. What I would do first is go to the other side and remove that spanner nut. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. I want to show you why the camera's on this side, what to remove here. Uh, that way we can finish removing this differential. So stick with me. We'll get to that other side of the swing arm there. Again, 14 millimeter with swivel. All those are out. Now we're gonna take our shock bolt, remove that one. Now we've got our 14 millimeter bolts up front here. That holds the differential onto 
the, uh, the actual swing arm here. But what we can do is remove this, um, but we're not actually gonna do that quite yet because if we remove this bolt and remove that bolt over there, our rear end's gonna drop and it's gonna bind this all up in here. So what I'm gonna do is grab our uh, wrench here and remove these 14 millimeter bolts. All right, one thing before we move any farther here, there's a little plate that looks like this. That goes on the front of uh, your differential here, the, on the front of your rear differential, and that's what the skid plate bolts to. So you've got that piece there, make sure that that goes in when you're going back together. Now we've got a little bit of oil dripping out here. I'm not totally sure um, why that would be dripping out of there. I'm assuming it's from the rear differential. I could be wrong, it could be from the oil seal up front here, which is another thing that I wanted to show you here in a little bit is how to get to that oil seal. Just had a question this week on somebody wondering how to remove and replace that oil seal. I'm gonna do a video on that. That's gonna be a separate video, so make sure you stick with us uh, and I can show you how to remove that. But I'm gonna take you over to the other side. Um, that way we can show you how to remove that swing arm bolt, but um, I'm gonna drop this side down because we're kind of completely disconnected here. I'm gonna grab an oil pan because I'm losing a lot of oil there. So go ahead and pull this. This nut is gonna to have to come off. Go ahead and pull this carrier here. You see our wheel bearings are right in there. Nice thing is you can get to them from this side here. Punch them out of there if you need. Um, but that is the left-hand carrier there. Now we can take our axle and actually shove it out that way. So the axle is ready to come out. Everything you can see is just kind of falling apart here because we've got all the nuts off of there, most of the bolts out. What, has, what we have not removed yet is uh, going to actually just fall out here in a second. So... I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see all of this as we take this apart. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt here. Now, shocks are disconnected. This axle is ready to come out of here. And this differential, I'm gonna take and pull this all out now. That way, and now I can slide this other carrier out the rest of the way. There's our carrier there. No bearings in this carrier. And then we've got our axle that's just gonna be slid out the rest of the way. You've, you've got a little stopper here. I'm gonna, you've got a little plate there on that end of that axle that's gonna keep you from going all the way through. So you're gonna have to remove that. You can just kind of tap it off just like that. If it's not coming as easy as that, take it off, set it on the bench, and you can work with it a little bit better. I'm going to bring you over to the other side here. I'm going to show you how to remove that swing arm, but we've got our prop shaft here that's just going to be able to pull right out of there. But I don't know that you really want to do that unless you're digging farther into that differential because it's going to be a little bit harder to get this back put into that yoke set up here uh, if you just pull it off when the swing arm's sitting there. So kind of a messy shaft right there. Again, I'm going to take you over to this side now. All right, to remove this swing arm there, you have your spanner nut. Like I said, we've got a 17 millimeter Allen that's gonna go in there. You just take a big socket wrench and a cheater bar. You might be able to loosen this up, but it's gonna be very, very difficult without loosening up this spanner nut here. What I do, because there's a handful of different sizes, I'm gonna get you the special tool. I'll put a link below for this tool used on this uh, spanner nut. Slide it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture up of what this spanner nut socket looks like. I don't have mine on me right now, uh, but you can go ahead, use that tool, slide it over top of there, turn it, just gonna be like a regular socket, and uh, it's gonna allow you to spin that uh, spanner nut. You wanna do it like a regular nut there, counterclockwise to loosen it up. Get that remotely loose, and then you can get on there with your 17 millimeter Allen and loosen this up. You can take it all the way out. We've already loosened it up, obviously, just to save a little bit of time and slide that out. Now, sometimes what happens is your bearings are actually gonna come with you, and that's not a good thing. Your swing arm bearings should stay inside of the swing arm. If they do come with, uh, sometimes it's a little bit challenging to get this out of the actual frame because they are larger than your frame is on the other side. If that's the case, maybe take a little WD-40 and spray it in there, let it sit for a little bit, and then sometimes you can get, depending on where this is, remove your spanner nut the rest of the way, if you bugger this up, you do want to replace it because you're going into the frame. You don't want this loose and you also don't want these threads screwed up because if you do, it's really, really hard to retap these. It's also very difficult to replace those threads. So make sure you use the right tools to remove this. 
uh, spanner nut, go to the other side then. A lot of times, if you've got this side loose, a lot of times taking this to the other side, it'll be fairly loose already because you've kind of taken the pressure off of that. So that is the rear end on a Honda Rubicon 500. If you guys have questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. If this video has been helpful, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys watching. Check out our links to some of the special tools that we use and sell. Uh, we also manufacture a lot of these, so check those out. Appreciate you guys watching.